good question, isn't it? Why don't I just, you know, and how many of you realize we do have missionaries that come from time to time, right? Amen. We've had a couple of missionaries in the last year. And people will say to me, well, why don't I just support those missionaries individually? Why, why do I give my money through the church and then the church writes them? A, why do I do it that way? Here's the reason why, all right? Uh, having been a missionary, having my brother being a missionary in Lithuania, having my niece's husband being in Chi Alpha, I understand all of these things, all right? Did you know this, that a personal pledge, in other words, if somebody meets a missionary and they tell them, look, I'm going to support you, a personal pledge, usually uh, 50% of personal pledges pass, you know, they, they kind of wither out after the first year. 50%. And five years later, if you take a look at a personal, how many think that's a really big commitment to support a missionary for five years? Five years later, only 10% of the people are actually giving towards that. The ones who said five years ago, we'll support you. Okay? But here's the thing. When a church says, listen, we're going to support a missionary, usually five years later, about 90% of that support is still coming in. Now, let me ask you this question. If you were a missionary, who would you want supporting you, a person or a church? Come on, somebody. We need to be honest and faithful about this. All right? And so this is important information. You say, well, why, how, how does all of this work? Well, let me just tell you. I'm going to let you in on the inside today, all right? When a missionary comes to visit us here at Fountain of Life, okay, the first thing that we always want to do is we want to give them the royal missionary welcome. How many of you know what that is? We always, when we introduce them, we always stand up and we give them a hand because they're giving their life for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? Then the next thing we want to do is we want to take up an offering for them. You say, well, what does that offering go for? Listen, every missionary in the Assemblies of God has two budgets, all right? They've got a cash budget, all right? That cash budget they've got to raise, and, and uh, that helps get them to the field, all right? It helps get them to where they're going, all right? So if we give $1,200 or $1,500, it supports them while they're here. It gets their, buys their plane ticket. It buys the equipment needed. It does all all of these things that help them get there, all right? But how many of you know we don't want them to just get there? We want them to get there and stay there and do their work. The only way that happens is when they raise a pledge budget, all right? A cash offering when they come gets them there. It's your monthly giving that keeps them there and supports them there. All right, and so that's incredibly important. And then another person might just say, well, listen, you know, do I really need to support missionaries? Uh, you know, I mean, let me tell you, let me tell you, there's a lot of competition in a sense, we could say, for people's money in today's world. And if you watch any Christian television, every single Christian televangelist, they have 12 different reasons why you need to give to them and to their ministry. And don't get me wrong, if the Holy Spirit tells you to give to some televangelist, or uh, you go ahead and you go ahead and do it. But I'm going to tell you that as for me and my house, I'm going to tell you where my money goes. It goes into the lives of men and women who've dedicated their lives to the cause, who are missionaries. You say, well, Pastor, they're not very known. Let me tell you something. What does it matter if they're known or if they're not known? Come on. Amen. Let me tell you something. They're about making Jesus known. They're about making the kingdom of God known. In fact, what they're actually about is taking people and raising them up and pushing them to the front so they can become unknown. Amen? And so let me tell you, I believe that, 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 that our missionaries, they do the hard work of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. They go to places where, where there is no church. They build friendships. They win souls to Christ. They disciple those, those people. They start creating churches and, uh, and raising up pastors and then creating Bible colleges and then a whole string of churches. And then, a, then there's a movement that starts in those places. And it is very intentional. Come on. So let Let's be intentional about our giving. Let's not just talk about it. Let's do it. John chapter 3, verse 17 and 18 says this. But whosoever has this world's goods. How many of you got some goods in the world? No one's committing to nothing today. You say, Pastor Bob is after the money today. I'm not raising my hands. That's all right. 
That's all good. Amen. We got this world's goods. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. I got a lot of this world's goods. And it's okay to have some of this world's goods. But it says this. It says, if you see his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. You know what that verse tells me? It's not about talking about missions. It's not about thinking about missions. It's about being a participant in winning the world for Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. If you want to honor Jesus, give him a big praise today. Amen. Number three today, we must remember that God honors our giving. God honors our giving. Did you know that our giving, first of all, honors God? And then when we've given, then what God does, He turns right around and honors our giving. I want to show you four ways today that God honors our giving. First of all, our gifts are honored by God through a reward in heaven. Do a reward in heaven. The word says this. That these are Jesus' words. He says, if you give a cup of water in my name, you'll receive a reward just for a cup of water. The guy's walking down the street and comes to the, your yard and says, man, I just need a cup of water. You give him a water and say, in Jesus' name, let me tell you something. That gets written down. You'll get a reward for that. That's what the word says. I'm just preaching the Bible today. Hello? Hello? God sees what we do. And I want you to know that God is interested in our money. Again, Paul was not rejoicing because his need was met, but he was uh, rejoicing because they would receive credit to their account. What account? <laughs> their account in heaven. How many of you realize that the word credit, that's a, biz that's a business terminology. God was keeping a record of their gifts and they would be rewarded for them. And I'll have you know that our giving is recorded and rewarded in heaven. Quiet in here today. Tell your neighbor you cannot take it with you. Hello. You can't take it with you. And it's not wise to leave it all to all your kids. Hello. Leave some for your kids, some for your grandkids. Come on, somebody. But we got to lay up some for ourselves in heaven. Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 19 says this. Do not store for yourselves treasures on earth. Oh, well, man, my, i got to get my 401K and my 403B9 and my, you know. That's what I've got, y'all. i got to preach to myself, too. Pastors have 403B9. Well, I'll educate everybody today, all right? Some of y'all like, what's that? Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal and where the stock market goes crashing down. Hello. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. You say, Pastor Bob, I would really love to have a heart for lost people. I would really love to, you know, to walk through a grocery store and feel moved because there are people around me that don't know Jesus. I, I want to have a burden for the people I work with and pray for them in a deeper way. Listen, put your treasure in the missions. Put your treasure into the kingdom of God. And let me tell you what happened. Your heart will follow right after that. And all of a sudden, we're where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. Come on, somebody. Amen. It's been said that everything that we earn will one day be left on earth when we die. However, whatever we give to the Lord will follow us to heaven. God honors our giving by crediting it to our account. Come on. And rewarding us in heaven. Imagine what it will be like that day when you stand at the judgment seat of Christ and give an account for your life. And, you and, and, and Jesus looks at you and he says to you, my son, my daughter, thank you so much for giving to the Lord. Thank you for giving. Thank you for investing. Thank you. And he begins to open up your eyes and show you how God took that gift and he multiplied it. Come on, somebody. Do you believe that God can do great things? Amen. I believe that he can. Amen. And so our gifts are honored by God through a reward in heaven. And then secondly, our gifts are honored by God by, through, by, God by becoming acceptable, sweet-smelling sacrifices to Him. 
Paul said that the gifts of the Philippians sent were a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. That's a little bit of Old Testament terminology when they used to burn an offering and the aroma of that, uh, that, that offering would go up towards heaven and God would, 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 would uh, enjoy that savor because he knew that it was given with the heart of love. And, and, you know, maybe the Philippians just thought they were giving to Paul, but they were actually giving to God, right? God receives it. And there's a powerful New Testament account of how our offering uh, how our offering is, is received by God. It's in the book of Acts chapter 10. Let me tell you about that. There was a man by the name of Cornelius, and one day he had a vision, right? And the scripture says he distinctly saw an angel of God who came to him and said, Cornelius. And Cornelius looked at him with a lot of fear and said, What is it, Lord? And uh, he asked, and, and, and the angel answered like this, He said, your prayers and your gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God. In other words, words, the prayers that we give, the offerings that we give to the poor, the offerings that we give to missions, they rise up before the Lord and the Lord remembers them. The Lord remembers them. It's a memorial offering before the Lord. I believe that. And I'll tell you, I've been on the mission field and I've seen some gifts that have been given to the poor you know, we, we, we work for uh, some uh, among the Wayu Indian people in Colombia. The Wayu Indians live on the, on the, uh, in the desert part of Colombia called La Guajira. And uh, uh, it's a very interesting society. It's actually a matriarchal society where the, the ladies make all the decisions. And uh, basically they're goat herders, all right? And so they can't quite get enough goats where they can eat really good so they'll kill a goat they'll eat for really good for two or three days and then their children and the rest they'll have to not eat for several days until they're able to kill another goat other than just maybe milking the goats or something like that because there's just really nothing out there in the Guajira and so when we were missionaries we were part uh, we did we went out and we helped to build a Latin American child care school that provided not just one but two meals a day for those students out there amen what a joy to see those kids coming and receiving that that food and then going to school and learning and growing let me tell you something i believe in what god is doing around the world and we can have a part of it amen Amen. And as we give, let me tell you something. God won't forget it. He'll remember it. Tell your neighbor, God is in the remembering business. Amen. He's not going to forget. And then number three, our gifts are honored by God through reward on earth. We already touched on this today. Paul had received their gifts. And he gave them a promise. He said, and my God will meet all of your needs according to his riches, uh, to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. Basically, this is what he said. God said, if you meet my need of giving, of, of being able to send these others, God will meet all of your needs. That means not only that God would meet their financial needs, but he'll meet their emotional, physical, social, spiritual need. Come on. Let me tell you something. You can't outgive God. He's going to give more to you than you could even imagine. You say, how can you prove that? I can prove it by the word of God because Luke chapter 6 and verse 38 says this. Give and nothing will happen. Nothing Nothing will be ever given to you. Isn't that what it says? No, it says give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Come on, somebody. I don't know about you, but I don't want to give to God with a Demitasi spoon. Some of y'all are like, what's a Demitasi spoon? My wife has these little teacups. She's got these itty bitty spoons. I guess it's to get one little cube of sugar out. I, mean, I don't want to give to God. Here's a dollar. You know, I want to get my scoop out. Come on, somebody, and give to the Lord like that. Amen? Amen. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 8, we're about to end this message today. Amen. It says, and God is able. Tell your neighbor, God's able. God is able to make all grace abound to, toward you that you always, 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 oh, 
You mean to tell me I'm going to have enough even if like the coronavirus just really takes off? Always? Oh, okay, just making sure here. Always having all sufficiency in all things, you might have an abundance for every good work. I don't know about you, but I want to live that one out. Amen? That was a promise that was, that, that was given for the givers. It says that all grace would be theirs. That they could abound in every single good work. In other words, grace would just overflow in the life of the believer. Grace would overflow in their families. Grace would overflow in their relationships. Grace would overflow in their churches and all the good things of the Lord. Come on, I just tell you that you cannot outgive God. You know, one day, a few years ago, I just was walking around my house praying and started looking around and, man, where'd all that stuff come from? Who's ever had that feeling? Some of y'all maybe don't. Oh, well, I did. Like, where'd I get all this stuff? All of a sudden, I started thinking, you know, hope gave me that. Somebody else gave me that. Someone else gave me, and I started looking around, and lots of the stuff I got in my house was given to me. Amen. It's a blessing. Jeff gave me this dresser. and Jay, I mean, Unbelievable stuff that God has given. Let me tell you something. You just cannot outgive God. Amen. If you believe that, let's just give him a great big uh, hand of praise today. And then lastly, our gifts are honored by God. By bringing glory to the Father eternally. I love this in verse number 20. It says, to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Glory forever and ever. Amen. What we're dealing with on earth today, that people are looking at today, are the temporal things of life. Uh, what's the, been the run in the market lately? <laughs> Toilet paper, Lysol, Soap, washing detergent, I don't know what all people have wanted, okay? Those are the temporal things. Let me tell you something. There's eternal things that are more important. And the word glory really has to do with the word weight, uh, with the weight of something. And when we give, we demonstrate how much God really matters to us. We demonstrate something of what is intrinsic to His nature, His glory. And when the early church sold, the scripture tells us they sold all that they had and gave it to the poor. Acts 2 and verse 45, it brought a whole lot of glory to God and it showed, it showed how much God really meant to them. It showed his importance in their life and it's the same for us as we give faithfully, as we give sacrificially. Let me tell you, it will bring glory to God eternally through the gift that we give. We receive the gift of being able to honor him and give and bring him glory and and uh, and that's a beautiful beautiful 